Thank you so much, uh, Stephen. You know, we are uh, so excited to, to, to be here. As, as uh, you know, Stephen and the Field Day crew know, this is, uh, you know, events that are near and dear to my heart. You know, I've been doing virtualization field days, storage field days, network field days, mobility field days, uh, and now we're at our inaugural AI field day. And, um, uh, you know, as, as Stephen pointed out, this is especially interesting for us because uh, I remember back in 2016, you know, we, we had started the dialogue with Stephen and Tom about, you know, creating an AI event. And uh, at the time, you know, we were saying, look, we, we have this AI driven wireless network, AI, uh, you know, applied AI is really happening quickly. And it was actually interesting because, you know, as Stephen mentioned, they're all about it. Um, and, but the, the, the thought process is, you know, are there enough vendors, you know, that can talk about it yet? You know, do we have the right delegates? And you can see how, how fast things moved. You know, now only, a, you know, a couple of years later, here we are with a full docket, you know, a full set of presentations, you know, experts that, that we can have uh, in-depth conversations around it. And so I think that's awesome, you know, to, to see how that evolved. Um, for those that know me and know Juniper, uh, again, we use this forum to show off the most interesting, exciting, innovative, innovative pieces of our platform, right? It was, uh, my memory serves correctly, MFD2, where we launched the first AI-driven wireless. It was MFD3, where we launched the first AI-driven virtual network assistant with uh, NLP, which we'll talk about uh, here as well. It was MFD4, uh, where we launched the first wired, AI ops for wired, and then five, where we added in the WAN, right? Um, so this is always an event where we come in and, and, and come in strong. You know, this one is, is a little bit different in that, um, you know, we usually have our networking guys on here talking about, you know, the applied pieces of that. And obviously we're going to talk about that, but this is where we really get to shine the light on some of the, the heroes behind the scenes, right? The folks, the data scientists, the folks that are really putting AI and applying it to our, our what we call the AI driven enterprise and really making it work. Uh, we really want to differentiate their work. We want to show, you know, what the, the, the culmination of five years of efforts comes to be. So, you know, I'm going to set the stage for these guys, just talk a little bit about the Juniper vision, you know, get off of here as quickly as possible so we can get to the, the smart guys. So, uh, you know, we have Sudhir Mata, who's our head of products. Uh, we have Bob Friday, who's our CTO. We have Jishin Wang, who's our uh, head of data science. They're going to talk about some of the self-driving capabilities that we've uh, implemented over the course of the last five years. They're going to talk about some new features around uh, how we're enabling better visibility into the client. We have Crystal Portocarrero coming on. Uh, another big thing we announced about a year ago is the integration of security with AI ops. She comes from our security team, so she's going to talk about that, risk, risk profiling and using real-time threat intelligence, uh, leveraging AI and, and our network. And then Bob's going to come back and talk about another thing that's very near and dear to heart, which is support. When we talk about AI, it's not just in the product itself, it's actually how we do support. You know, we've eliminated tier one support. We've eliminated tier two support. That's actually handled by a virtual network assistant. And Bob's going to talk about that journey and, and where it's going. So again, we're really excited. A lot in store, as always. I don't have to tell you guys, don't be wallflowers and, and, and be afraid to interrupt. We're expecting a lot of uh, interaction here. Okay. Um, and again, don't, don't be afraid to uh, obviously tweet uh, AI Field Day, uh, MFD, and here's some of the individuals that uh, if you want to uh, tag them as well. Also, too, for those listening, um, if you do uh, you know, post something great on LinkedIn or Twitter, we have an eye on it right now, and we will be giving away two HomePod minis at the end. So uh, the best tweets, the people that are most engaged, um, you know, uh, please you know, uh, get your voices out there, and, and we'll make sure that uh, we, we reward you for it. So with that being said, let's let's talk a little bit about the setup. Uh, you know, again, the, my name is Jeff Aaron, uh, head of enterprise marketing here at MIST, and uh, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is you know how we got here, right? The Juniper MIST vision has always been about what we call the AI-driven enterprise. You know, as I mentioned in 2016, we launched the first piece of that as MIST when we were a standalone company. Uh, which is the wireless piece, you know, the first AI driven wireless network. And we introduced a whole host of new features like, you know, service levels and, and uh, you know, event correlation using machine learning and uh, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, machine learning for location services. That was all piece of the equation. Um, but our vision was always to take that wider, you know, really have end to end insight, end to end automation, end to end actions, both for troubleshooting, but also a better visibility into the user experience. This isn't about network experiences anymore. AI lets you take it from that old world and really let you deliver the best user experiences. So to that end, this had to move beyond the wireless domain to the other areas. And that's where you know, Juniper and MIST coming together um, uh, via an acquisition of MIST in, in 2019 really helped us. So since then, we've not only added the wireless piece into our AI engine and cloud, the wired access piece has been moved into the AI engine and cloud. 
We announced the, the WAM piece uh, moving in there as well, as well as the security piece that ties it all together. And again, these are some of the things that we're gonna talk about today. The crown jewel in the Juniper age of an enterprise is Marvis, what we call our virtual network assistant. And again, we're gonna show you uh, ad nauseum, you know, what, what Marvis can do, but literally the concept here is you can do simple language queries. It understands the intent. There's a conversational interface. It gets you to the answers you need. It's like having Bob Friday, our CTO, is sitting right there next to you, another part of your IT team. And that's what we're really excited about, and that's what we're going to drill down into. You're going to hear a lot um, throughout the course of this day. Uh, you guys have been following this space. I'm the marketing guy. I'm perhaps as guilty as anyone. There's a lot of buzz out there. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of copying out there. It's really hard to understand the difference between all the different solutions. So what I'll say is, if nothing... You know, if, if after seeing the proof points behind this, you know, this is kind of the key takeaway slide in the areas that we feel that, and we know that Juniper was first, in many instances, we're the only, and this is how we're going to continue to lead when it comes to AI driven networking. So number one, as I said, it's about measuring and optimizing the user experience, right? We rewrote the 802.11 control plane. We have real time feeds going from access points to the cloud real-time telemetry coming from our access points. It's about the quality of the data that lets you look at the individual user experience, not comparing peer groups, looking at individual user experiences so you can make real-time decisions to optimize the experience. So that's number one thing that differentiates us. Secondly, as we mentioned, this is end-to-end, -end, client to cloud, LAN, WLAN, WAN, security, and eventually data center. One AI engine, one cloud, all working together in harmony. That's what we deliver that no one else does. Thirdly is we're in our fourth, sometimes fifth generation data science algorithms. Things like anomaly detection, again, it took us years to perfect, but it's gotten to the point where it's near zero false positives. Maturity matters, right? Uh, I remember when I got my first Alexa, I said, Alexa, who's the quarterback for the 49ers? And it said, Joe Montana is a famous 49ers quarterback. Right now, you ask it, it'll give me every stat under the sun for you know Garofalo and uh, you know his replacement as he as he's hurt, right? So AI gets better as it learns, as do the algorithms. We've been doing this for five years. We're, we're, we're there, and, and, and our customers can, can prove that. The fourth is, as I mentioned, the only true AI-driven virtual network assistant. Ask it questions. It gives you answers, NLP, NLU, conversational interface. We're going to talk about that more in, in detail. Um, the only vendor with AI-driven support. So literally, every ticket that comes in, we run through Marvis. So that Marvis is learning, it's getting better with a goal of actually being able to answer 80, 90% of questions without a human ever getting involved. And we're gonna show that off as well. Um, the architecture matters. So we do use a modern microservices cloud. And the beauty here is it's one cloud with one instance, right? So you don't have to install four or five different pieces of cloud. And similarly, it's integrated hardware. You don't have any overlay. The same access points that are delivering Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the same switches that are doing uh, you know, ethernet, et cetera have these interfaces and are running to our cloud. You don't need separate overlay sensors. So that's a lot I just threw at you is because we've been doing this a long time. So again, these are a lot of the first and the things that make us unique. You mentioned you've, you've effectively eliminated all human tier one and tier two support for, for your support of your products. Uh, so we don't have tier one and tier two support and that uh, generally uh, if a question comes in, we try to answer it you know, with Marvin automated through self-driving. If a question does come in, we usually escalate that right to our, you know, our senior engineer. So yeah, we've eliminated the, hi, what's your problem? Have you unplugged it? Um, have you, oh, to, you know, tier one to prove that there's Rebooting a Rebooting and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 And in fact, we have a, the point, and again, Bob will go into more detail, uh, where we'll even do proactive things like proactive RMAs. Like we'll have an AP actually show up at your doorstep when you may not have even known that you were having an issue. Um, and that's the, that's the future of, of where AI really comes into the equation. All right. Thanks. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, so as we said, uh, on the customer side, uh, there's some pretty big names here, you know, in that, you know, we've been working, uh, you know, with, with the, the, the tops across all verticals, you know, higher ed, like MIT, retail, um, you know, top, uh, you know, SaaS companies like ServiceNow. Uh, you know, for those that don't know Juniper, we have a 1.6 billion, north of 1.6 billion annual enterprise business. Our campus and branch and enterprise switching has been growing double digit a quarter of a quarter, year over year uh, for a while now, while the rest of the industry has actually been shrinking, you know, especially this year due to COVID and other things. The MIST business grew 100% last quarter, 180% bookings, 100% logos. And the key point there is 100% of all MIST products, all MIST customers are using AIML. 
it's, it's, it's not even an option, right? It, it, it's, it's what we do. And so that's really exciting. And then the other thing that's obviously exciting is just last week, uh, you know, Gartner came out with their magic quadrant where based on our AI ops vision, we jumped into the leadership position. The top leader with the top ability to execute. In just you know four years, we were able to do that, and we're doing the same in other areas. Um, already there with data center, you know, WAN security, also moving that. And the common thread there is AI ops. That's what's making this all happen, and that's why we're going to focus on this here. Um, so uh, finally, real quick, before I get off the stage here and hand it to the real guys, um, again, we're going to talk about a lot of things. Here's the two things that are especially new that we're going to highlight. One is this, you know, Marvis Android client and client roaming to really put you in the shoes of the client uh, folks to get even better visibility. And the second thing is uh, Chris was going to come on and talk about risk profiling. As we mentioned, this isn't just about the network, wired wireless WAN coming into the, the MIST AI engine. It's also about security. So it's not just about end-to-end -end user experiences. It's about end-to-end -end security and making sure they're secure user experiences. And that's what the AJ of an enterprise is all about. 